I had no experience building quadcopters before, but I built one all the same, just to show them. It crashed horribly. So I built a second one. That one crashed horribly. So I built a third. That burned down, fell over, then crashed horribly. But the fourth one stayed up after takeoff. And that's what you're going to get, lad. The strongest quadcopter in all of, well, Let's say it doesn't crash that much anymore. Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. This is going to be a first of two videos about building a quadcopter with Raspberry Pi as a companion computer and Google Coral USB accelerator. In fact, in this first video, I'm mostly going to be talking about my experience of building a drone with a companion computer as a person with a background in software engineering and little to none experience building flying machines. To freshen things up a little bit, this video is going to be an anti-tutorial format, which means you want to do exactly the opposite of what I'm saying. I'm even going to put a warning red box right here. Here you go. Read it. Serious business. Let's begin. You have a companion computer on board. Don't buy a receiver and a remote. Save some money. I mean, that thing is that smart, it practically flies itself. You flew DJI drones, right? Your DIY drone is going to be even more stable than that. It will wait patiently, hovering, solid, like a rock, while you go through controls on your laptop. Go for the cheapest flight controller there is. I mean, surely you can spend a few hundred bucks on Navia, which just works, but you're in here for learning, right? So get the most basic flight controller so you can figure out the communication protocols and write the driver for it. I would suggest even building a flight controller yourself. Better yet, don't use any of the available microcontrollers. Design one yourself and implement it. When writing a code for your companion computer, especially the communication protocols, don't test too much. Exception handling is for wussies. Real engineers test their code by just executing it and checking what happens. Even if the code is controlling the motors on DJI flame wheel F450 frame with 10 inch props, which is standing one meter from you in your apartment at one o'clock in the night. I mean, what can go wrong? Altitude hold mode? Surely, it works indoors. You shouldn't just take the word of people writing the documentation for your flight controller as ground truth. Maybe it doesn't work for them, but definitely work for you. So your drone will not crash horribly into a ceiling after sudden air pressure change indoors. No, sir, no, that will not happen. Speaking of safety, it's for wussies. If you haven't been ignoring it yet, it's, it's, it's time to start, because those things are smart and practically fly themselves. For your testing, choose an open place with no people around. Maybe something like a roof of your 11th floor office building would be really nice testing ground. Your drone has GPS, doesn't it? How far can it fly anyway? And what is this thing called fly away that everyone in the documentation keeps talking about? Okay, the anti-tutorial part is over now. Here is red warning box again. You're welcome. As of now, I have two drones. Flame wheel F450 DJI frame with PeakSock flight controller and the smaller racing quad frame QAE250 with APM, Ardu Pilot, 2.8 flight controller. 
I got object detection and drone control to work together in simulation using drone kit CITL software in the loop uh, software package. The next step is to get the video stream from OpenCV with bounding boxes to the Q ground control station interface on my Android phone. All this will be running on Flamewheel F450 drone frame. For the smaller one, I decided to leave it as simple FPV drone. If you're interested in making one yourself with Raspberry Pi Zero, the process is quite straightforward. Download AP Streamline image for Raspberry Pi, flash it onto SD card. If you're using USB port for communicating with flight controller, you'll need to change the port in settings. Also, you'll need to add a command to RC local file to start streaming the video immediately after boot. More details can be found in the article with video script, link in the description. Overall, the setup works stable. The only necessary improvement is to attach an external antenna for Raspberry Pi Zero. Because all the interference coming from the motors, Raspberry Pi Zero internal antenna is not good for anything except for testing. To reduce the number of wires, you can power Raspberry Pi Zero using GPIO pins through 5 volt DC to DC converter. If you want to have companion computer and flight controller communicating using UART, it's also possible, but for Raspberry Pi Zero, you need to have an adapter to convert the voltage levels between these two. PIXOC and APM flight controllers, they have 5 volt on telemetry port. So if you don't use that adapter, you're going to burn your Raspberry Pi Zero's UART. So don't connect them directly. Stay tuned for the update and second part of the video, where I will be specifically talking about using Raspberry Pi 3D with Google Coral USB Accelerator as a companion computer. Share, like and subscribe. And most importantly, stay safe building your drone. Redbox warning. Till the next time.